All right, awesome pre-calc students. This is 7.6. Um, this is the last section in chapter 7, and then we will have, we will soon have a chapter 7 test, okay? So keep that in mind. Before I give you all of the identities for the double angles, um, I'm going to um, prove it first to see how or why uh, we we have what we have, or we are using these formulas, okay? So the first thing is I'm going to write an identity that you already know, such as sine of alpha plus beta, okay? So right now, can you do me a favor and give me that identity? What is sine of alpha plus beta? Okay, so did you write down sine of alpha cosine of beta because it's an addition of sine. I'm going to add here. Oopsie. And then I will write sine. Well, actually, I think I normally write cosine first, right? So cosine of alpha sine of beta. And it doesn't really matter, okay? So what if, okay, so what if I, if alpha and beta are the same, okay? So what I mean is that let alpha be theta and also let beta be theta, okay? So this means alpha is the same as beta because they're all what? Theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this in, okay? So sine of alpha now is theta, and beta is now theta. So I'm going to write, every time I see alpha and theta, I will now use, every time I see alpha and beta, I will now use just theta, okay? So, and yes, in mathematics, um, what we do is we manipulate one equation to come up with another, okay? So in here, sine of alpha plus alpha is now sine of, and not alpha, I'm sorry, sine of theta plus theta is now sine of two theta, okay? Equals to, well, would you agree that sine of theta, cosine of theta, in over here, I can write sine of theta in the front, right? Because addition is commutative, or in, and so is multiplication, okay? So because multiplication is commutative, that means I can move things back and forth. So would you agree I can combine these because they're exactly the same? So sine of 2 theta is 2 sine of theta times cosine of theta. And guess what? This is a new identity, okay? So new identity, highlight, and let's write this up here, okay? And yes, that's how they come up with one new identity. They, they, they manipulate the equations that's already known. All right, so sine of 2 theta is called double angle formula because instead of 1 theta, it's now 2 theta. That's why it's called double. So here's your first identity. Sine of 2 theta is always 2 sine of 1 theta times cosine of 1 theta. So that's how they came up with the double angle identity for sine, okay? So now we can also work with cosine, okay? I'm gonna use a different ink, All right? So I'm gonna start out with the same thing, cosine of alpha plus beta, okay? Do me a favor and write down that identity, please. Okay, so let's say cosine of alpha cosine of beta, in cosine the sine's are opposite, sine of alpha and sine of beta. So similarly, I'm going to manipulate this the same way, okay? Um, we are going to make alpha and beta the same, okay? So let alpha be the same as beta, and let's all call it now theta, okay? And yes, in mathematics you can do that. So what if that's the case, then now I would have cosine of alpha is now theta, so is beta, okay? So every time I see alpha and beta, I will now put in theta because 
that's what I assume over here. So sine of theta times sine of theta. Well, cosine of theta plus theta is now cosine of two theta. Okay, so you have the double angles coming around. Equals cosine of theta times cosine of theta is now cosine square of theta. Okay, minus sine square of theta. Okay. All right, so guess what? This is our identity for cosine of 2 theta. Isn't that beautiful? Let's write it up, okay? Cosine of 2 theta is cosine square of single theta take away sine square of single theta. But with cosine of double angle, we can also manipulate this, okay? Remember this identity that we had before. So, identity, right? Sine square of theta plus cosine square of theta equals one, right? So would you agree that I can admit cosine square of theta equals one minus sine square of theta? So what I can do with double angle identity is I'm going to create different one just based on other things that we already know every time you see a cosine square I can now put in 1 minus sine square of theta and then bring this down minus sine square of theta so cosine of a double angle is here's another one now these all come from the original okay but sometimes one is easier to use than other so that's why we want to write all of these down. So let me write this one down, okay? And I want to write that in red because that's cosine of a double angle. All right, so it's one minus two sine square of theta, okay? Now, well, technically, I don't really have to substitute in cosine square. I can technically substitute in sine square, would you agree? sine square of theta equals one minus cosine square of theta, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing, right? I'm gonna take this, what we already know, okay? Cosine of two theta equals, I'm gonna keep cosine square of theta, but substitute in sine square is one minus cosine square of theta. Then from here, cosine of a double angle is, distribute the negative sign to see what I have, minus one, plus cosine square of theta. Combine like terms, cosine two theta equals two cosine square of theta minus one. Guess what? This is another identity for cosine of a double angle. So if you can see, cosine of a double has three different equations, okay? Oopsie, I meant to use red. All right, so here's another one. Cosine of a double is, now, do you have to memorize all of this? Yes, okay, but if you don't, like on the test, if you don't have it all memorized, technically, can you go and like um, derive it from original or from scratch? Of course, okay. So if you get stuck on the test and don't remember what to do, just start from scratch, okay? All right, we got sine of a double, we have cosine of a double, guess what? We can also do tangent of a double, okay? So. What would I do with tangent of a double? I'm going to do the same thing. So, I can also manipulate tangent of a, a double. Tangent of a double, though, it's going to be um, um, it's going to be a little bit longer, so I'm just going to give it to you. Okay, are you ready? I'm going to use a different ink. How about green? So tangent of 2 theta is, in your book, um, I'm going to give you 2 tangent of theta, and should I do this with you from scratch? Maybe I should, huh? Okay, let's start from scratch, that way you can see where this comes from. Alright, so just like the other ones, okay, I'm going to start with you from scratch. Are you ready? So tangent of alpha plus beta equals to tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta all over 1 minus tangent of alpha times tangent of beta. And again, let alpha be exactly the same as beta. 
which let's call it now theta. So tangent of theta plus theta is tangent of theta plus tangent of theta all over 1 minus tangent of theta times tangent of theta. Then from here, can you see what's going on? Why don't you simplify that for me? Do you see where tangent of 2 theta comes from? Tangent of theta plus tangent of theta is 2 tangent of theta, would you agree? All over 1 minus tangent times tangent is tangent squared of theta. So that's where they came up with this double angle for tangent, okay? So that is how we came up with all of our double angle identities. Now, do you need to know this? Do I need to memorize this? Oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Memorize, please, okay? I will not give you these at all on your test, so make sure uh, we know where or how or what the double angle is. Okay? Example one, use the half angle formulas to find the exact value of each. And in here, I gave you three uh, questions, question A, question B, question C. So question A said sine of 22.5, and you can't use the calculator because you have to find the exact value. And in addition, it says use the half angle formulas. Well, half angle formulas are defined for you already here. Whoa, yay! See right here? Da -da -da. There you go. So this one, I'm using sine, right? But before you can go and use the half angle formula, the sine identity says, according to what you see up there, sine of alpha divided by 2 equals plus or minus big radical 1 minus cosine of alpha all over 2. And that 2 is under the radical, and that's important, okay? So make sure when you write it, the 2 is shown when you're writing that it's under the radical. So the question is, you are provided with sine of 22.5. You need to rewrite this, okay? Sine of what? divided by 22.5 gives you, I'm sorry, sine of what divided by 2 gives you 22.5, okay? So now sine of what, what angle, in, in this case is in degrees, because there's a bubble right there, what degrees, when I take it and I divide it by 2, it will give me exactly the same. So these two things should be exactly the same. So sine of what divided by 2 gives me 22.5. Well, the answer to that is 45 degrees, okay? And what's the trick? The trick is you take this angle, 22.5, you multiply by 2. So you're kind of going backwards. When you multiply by 2, it's 45 degrees, okay? And this always go in here. So that's the trick. Okay. So next, you would need to use identity. Okay. So now I have sine. Alpha is now 45 degrees. Here's alpha. Get a different color. Here is alpha. Alpha is 45 degrees. But I'm going to write the identity first. Are you ready? Sine of alpha, 45 degrees all over 2 equals. Okay. Now, the plus and minus, you have to pick one. Pick only one, plus or minus, not both, so keep that in mind. Well, 22 degrees, 22.5 degrees, I should say, that's going to be in quadrant number one, okay? So in quad one, I have to pick positive. So I have to pick positive, and you only pick one, not both. Okay, so 1 minus cosine of 45 degrees all over 2. Then from here, I will simplify. 
since I we have chosen a positive, because sine again, 22.5 is in quad 1. In quad 1, sine's positive, cosine's positive, tangent's positive. So in this case, we pick quad 1, which is positive. I don't need to write positive throughout, but now cosine of 45 degrees is rot 2 over 2. And dividing by 2, I can write it this way with extending my radical sign. Dividing by 2 is like multiplying by a half, okay? So from here, I'm going to do a common denominator. See this right here? I have to do that first. And that right there, common denominator of 2. So I'm going to change the 1 into a 2. Extend my radical line. Dividing by 2 is multiplying by 2. So think of it that way. And simplify some more. Now that under the radical, I can put it over 2 like this. So this is 2 minus rat 2 on the top times 1 half. Okay. Well, this is really then 2 minus rat 2 all over 4. What's square root of 4 on the bottom? On the top, there's not much you can do. You have to leave it exactly like this. 2 minus radical 2. Because you can't simplify out the top, but on the bottom, I should write that 4, and then I'm going to simplify one more step. On the bottom, when you have one big radical, you can write it as two separate radicals, only when you are dividing and um, multiplying. Um, so when I write it to two different radicals, the top, you have a radical under a radical, which cannot be simplified, but square root of 2 is, I'm sorry, square root of 4 is 2, and that is as far as you can go with sine of 22.5. Now we can do the same thing with cosine, okay? Cosine of 5 pi over 12. And as you know, denominator 12, you can't do anything with it, okay? You have to use a sum of difference or um, half angle. In this case, it wants you to use half angle. So the same thing as earlier, okay? Cosine of what angle? When I divide it by 2, okay? So my goal is what is this angle and this angle? They have to be exactly the same. So when I divide it by 2, what is going to give me 5 pi over 12? Okay? What angle when I divide by 2 equals 5 pi over 12? So again, just like earlier, you go backwards, okay? You take 5 pi over 12, and you multiply by 2, or 2 over 1, okay? Dividing, when you go backwards, is multiplying. And if that's the case, this is reduced down to 6, and this is 1. So the answer is really 5 pi over 6. And leave it as 5 pi over 6. Don't try to convert, because 5 pi over 6 is going to be your identity. So the identity says cosine of alpha divided by 2 is either plus or minus, you have to pick one, 1 plus cosine of alpha all over 2. Well, your alpha in this one is really, alpha is really 5 pi over 6, okay? The division of 2, it's already there, so they are exactly the same. So now I'm going to write cosine of 5 pi over 6 divided by 2, okay? The dividing by 2 is just letting me know that you're using half angle. Now you have to pick. Okay, pick positive or negative. Only one. Pick positive or negative. Not both. Not both. Okay, so 12, 5 pi over 12. You have to decide what quadrant that is in. So let's talk about denominator of 12. Pi is right here with denominator of 12. That's really 12 over 12 pi. 6 over 12, it's a, it's pi over 2. So 5, again, is in quadrant number 1, right? So 5 pi over 12 is really right here, okay? Somewhere there, 5 pi over 12. Because you're in quadrant number 1, I will pick positive, okay? Not all the time that we will be in positive quadrant, so make sure you understand why we pick what we pick. So now we're going to write 1 plus cosine of 5 pi over 6, all division by 2. And again, 2 is under the radical. And slowly work out your Algebra 1 skills, okay? 
So now, since we have chosen positive, I don't have to write the positive in front all the time. So it's going to be 1 plus. What is cosine of 5 pi over 6? I would love it if you write the answer down for me. Cosine of 5 pi over 6 is what? Did you say negative radical 3 over 2? Awesome, okay? Don't forget the negative, because 5 pi over 6 itself is in quad 1. But half of that is it's, um, 5 pi over 12. Now, dividing by 2, I can write division this way, because soon I will be flipping it, okay? Next, I am going to find common denominator for the inside. So see this right here? Because you have to add first before you divide, right? So the common denominator would be 2 over 2 minus radical 3 over 2. Now I will multiply by its reciprocal. And then from here, I now have under 1 radical, so 2 minus radical 3 all over 2 times, oops, you guys see how I wrote 1 fourth right here? I did the math already in my head, so I knew that was going to be 4, so but this should be a one-half still. Now I can write a 4. So this is 2 minus radical 3 all over 4. And remember, earlier we said if you have one big radical and they are dividing, you can make them into two different radicals. So if I do that, I would have 2 minus radical 3. Not much you can do with the numerator, but the denominator you can simplify. And this is my final answer for cosine of 5 pi over 12. Okay, and we have one more for example one, and that will be it. I'm not going to do any more for this set of video. Well, cosine of 7 pi over 8, let me tell you something. I did not give you an identity for that at all. But that doesn't mean you can't find it, okay? Cosine, so let's first find an angle. Cosine, I'm sorry, not cosine, cosecant. Cosecant of 7 pi over 6, no identity is given. But that doesn't mean you cannot find an answer for it. So the first thing I would like for you to do is, 7 pi over 6 is the angle that we're supposed to use. So now I would like for you to do, cosine of cosecant, oh gosh, why do I keep saying cosine? Cosecant of what angle in radians when I divide it by 2 equals to 7 pi over 8? Take a minute or two to think about it. Remember, you can also go backwards, okay? So don't be shy to go backwards. So dividing by 2 when you go backwards, it's like multiplying, okay? So when I multiply by 2 over 1, I can simplify this to 4, and that's 1. So that's 7 pi over Four and leave it as 7 pi over 4, okay? Um, all right, so now let's use your identity. I did not give you any formula or identity for cosecant. So that means I would have to use 1 over sine, right? 1 over sine is cosecant and perfectly okay. Don't be shy about using 1 over sine. 1 over sine at alpha divided by 2 equals 1 over big radical. Okay, there's still plus or minus in the front of this radical. 1 minus cosine of alpha all over 2. Then from here, I'm now going to write 1 over sine of your alpha is 7 of pi over 4. So 7 pi over 4 divided by 2. You don't have to do anything here. This is just writing out the formula. This is the part where you have to do something. All right. Oops, I forgot the 1 divided by. Okay, so 1 divided by big radical, okay? 1 minus alpha is, alpha is 7 pi over 4. So I'm going to write everything out first before I do the math. So cosine is 7 pi over 4. I'm just going to go and multiply it by 1 half, okay? Because what's happening is, as you can see, dividing by 2, let's go back. Can you guys see that dividing by 2? It's ending up to be multiplying by a half in, in the end. 
So I can just go straight through and say, hey, you know what? I know it's going to be divided by 2, so I'm just going to multiply by its reciprocal right away. Okay. So now you have to pick. Okay. I want you to decide. Are you going to pick positive or are you going to pick negative? So here we go. Pick positive or negative. Then go back to the original angle. 7 pi over 8. That is in quadrant because it, this is a pi. And pi with denominator of 8 is 8 over 8. So 7 pi is over here. Sine in quad 2 is positive. That means cosecant will also be positive. So you're going to pick positive angle. And then here we go. Oh, and then I forgot the 1 divided by again. Okay. So let's do 1 divided by big radical. 1 minus cosine is 7 pi over 4. That's in quad 4, so that's going to be rad 2 over 2 for cosine. And again, I'm going to bring down the positive 1 and half here. Extend the radical. Keep on going. Next is I'm going to find common denominator. Common denominator is going to be 2 minus 2. 2 over 2 minus rad 2 over 2 times the 1 half. Okay, keep on going. Then 1 over. Now the denominator is the same, so 2 minus rad 2 all over 2 times 1 half. Keep on going. 1 over big radical. 2 minus rad 2 all over 4. Okay, but as you know, you can take out the denominator because square root of 4 is 2, so 1 over radical 2 minus rad 2 all over 4. I'm sorry, all over 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Okay. So what do, what do I do now? I have so many fractions. Well, it's not too bad. 1 divided by radical 2 minus rad 2 over 2 is like 1 multiply 2 over square root of 2 minus rad 2. Okay. So now this is really where I am. But I can't have radical on the bottom, so this is where I need to do a little bit more math. So it's really where I am is right here. I'm going to go in and multiply, not the conjugate, but an identical radical. That's the only way that you will get be able to get rid of that radical. So when I multiply by the identical, I now have 2 times 2 minus radical 2 all over. The radical times the radical, now the big radical is gone, but I still have this little guy, this little radical right there. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Okay, now I can multiply by the conjugate. So ugly, isn't it? Sorry. Okay, I did not create this problem. I stole this from your book, and so you cannot blame me. I'm just the messenger, okay? Then from here, because I know a lot of you are upset, oh, why is she giving me this? I'm not giving you anything. I just simply pick out problems from the book. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4. Rod 2 times rod 2 is now 2. On the top, I'm just going to multiply this out to see if it's any cuter. Hopefully it is, but if it isn't, don't blame me. Okay, on the top, here we go. Um, 2 times that is going to be 2, and this big old ugly radical, this fat one, Okay, and this times that is going to be a plus 2 outside, inside, I have 2 times 2 minus rad 2. I know, I know it's ugly. I'm not denying anything, okay? Okay, let me double check to see. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 2 times that is 4. My bad. There you go. All right, so here we go. So now this is what I have, and it's so ugly. I can't stand it. But I'm just the messenger, so don't shoot the messenger. All right, on the top, I have 4 and 2, so I can take out a 2. So now I have 2, um, 4 rad 2 minus rad 2. So that's 2 rad 2 minus rad 2. Uh, plus, I took out 2 in the front, so now it's just going to be a 4 minus 2 rad 2. Okay, inside, all of it inside. And then I can cancel that, and that's it. So 2 rad 2 minus rad 2 plus big radical 4 minus 2 rad 2. And that is the end, and I know that's so ugly, but I did not create the problem. Now, that is really advanced, right? That requires a lot of algebra. And so would you give me full credit if I get to here? Let me see where we were at. I will give you full credit if you get to here. 
okay, um, before you rationalize at the bottom. But the reason I do all the way, because sometimes if it's a multiple choice in the book, I do not create the problems, and the book has to go all the way, I need you to be able to go all the way. So free response, okay to be here, okay? Okay to stop here for free response questions, okay? But multiple choice, you need to go here. So I hope you understand.